Hello, welcome back. Yeah. Hello and welcome back. It's Epigross here with a more Chrono Cross Blind. In the last episode, we explored the third floor. I'm pretty sure. And in the in this episode, we shall uh, try out some new characters or other characters. Let's see who do I want to use. I just noticed that I don't have kid. Hmm. You know what? We have to use the Valley for quite a while, so we're gonna use him. Uh, I'm also gonna allocate him, so give me a few here. There we go. He's all allocated. Haha! <laughs> now you can't laugh at it, Valik! Sucks to be you! I'm just kidding. So apparently I've been saying allocate wrong the entire time. It's apparently not called allocate, which is the way I read it. So, will I put an end to calling it alcolate? Probably not. I've gotten used to it at this point, and I will probably continue with it. You know what's funny is that I've actually missed out on the O the entire time. I haven't really seen it at all. Okay, there's those blue things. Only personnel registered as Arbiter may enter. The experiment will begin soon. Please evacuate to your designated position. We will do the same in the case of an emergency. Okay, so he says the same thing. Not allowed to enter floor 4 on that side anyway. So we're gonna enter from this side instead. Okay, we have some kind of machine here. Everyone gather around. Okay, fair enough. Let's see. In the 11th century, a scientist by the name of Luca indicated the possibility of time travel through the use of a time egg, which utilized miniature black holes. Whether this could actually be possible or not is still the subject of intense debate, and no conclusion has been made. Oh, really? According to her theory, by rotating a single point of supergravity, space-time continua can be drawn in, thus making it possible to transform that singular point which pulls in everything else into a ring formation. Using this ring as a gate between dimensions, it should be possible to travel back and forth between various space-time. Fair enough then. I've heard that the time egg already existed during the legendary ancient dynasty. We shouldn't have to rely on theories from an ancient civilization that may not have even existed. We can do this. But it's been said that time was altered using the time egg. That's just a legend. There isn't even any evidence to prove that this ancient dynasty ever existed. The experiment should be starting soon. After we discovered an unusual gravitational field in this barren sea of El Nido, we built several artificial islands and established chrono Chronopolis. This was all done to facilitate our top secret research. But now, our research is about to come to its end. Once the final adjustments are made, the experiment will commence. It's just a matter of time, so everyone should keep up the good work. The chief hasn't returned yet. He hasn't? Then, we'll have to hold off until he gets back. To think that time is not absolute, but elastic, relative and subjective. That there can be individual differences caused by changes in time. Perhaps the same people and life forms can even exist in several different space times. An independent time that flows with a wheel of its own. Ha! <laughs> what nonsense. No, I don't think that's nonsense. You know, we have different uh, universes and whatnot. We're conducting a simulation of phase metastasis. Oh, I have no idea what that is, but sure. This research center was established under the utmost secrecy by the central regime. Uh, sounds like a bad idea to do that. Uh, will you talk to me? Yeah, you will. We may appear to be a military research center, but we're actually conducting research on time. Yeah, I figured that much. The lost and the lost ancient magic civilization of Zale. 
if it really did exist, someone may have even traveled through time to this period. Yeah, maybe. Oh, we have a door here. Nice. Eh, why not fight against this guy? We haven't had a couple of battles in a while. And we haven't used Valak in, you know, forever in battle. Wow. He even has lower HP than Riddle at this point. Oh well. Gotta love how high crit chance this weapon has. Sadly though, it's connected to the weapon and not Grodus just being incredibly awesome. Okay, so let's try out Velik in Bell again. He barely do any damage. It's a bit sad actually. So I assume that Velik is quite under leveled at this point. I do believe he only has a bronze weapon as well, so I should probably craft one for him. That would probably be a good idea, actually. Wow, that's a lot of game. Uh, that's a lot of stat gains, actually. Uh, Velik also has frog prints, and uh, I don't remember what the last one was called. Okay, let's see here. Let's have a shot with you. The chief said he was going out for a walk. He's probably by the dock somewhere, gazing out to the sea. Yeah, he probably is there. Okay, I was kind of hoping I would find a way to open that up, but nope. Yeah, and that door is locked. I'm not gonna fight against that one. I'm gonna fight against this one, though. Hopefully it's a couple of easy enemies, but we shall see, we shall see. It's just these two, okay. Nothing to worry about then. Yeah, you attack Riddle, go ahead and do that. Velik is good with hits at the very least, and here comes an Aqua Ball. Plus three at that. I don't think that will do very much damage though. Okay, never mind, it did a lot more damage than I anticipated. Okay, so Valak is still good with magic. But I think he has a pretty bad weapon, and I think that's where the problem lies. Okay, got some more HP there. I pretty much believe that uh, most battles at this point will increase Valak's stats. I could be wrong though. Okay, so we know that the chief is down at the docks, which is now our current destination. Now that every floor has been uh, explored. But first, please present the central lab zone registration card. Okay, so we're not allowed down into the basement, fair enough. So we have one floor we have yet to explore, and that is basement. And we're not allowed down there. Of course, we still have the docks to explore. And we have one room that we need to do something in, in floor 2. And of course we have the final area of floor 4. Okay, we have a lot of weird machines here. Okay, there he is. Right at the docks. Is there... nope, nothing over here, okay. But since we are at the save point, I'm gonna go and craft a new weapon and possibly some other equipment for Valix, so give me a few here. Smith Spirit, here we go. Okay, so I took the liberty to actually equip the armor as well. I gave, uh, or rather I crafted a stone uh, allure for Valix and a couple of stone vests for which I equipped on Valix, Riddle and Grodus. The Time Research Lab, which served as the foundation of this research center, appeared out of nowhere in the year 2300 and was headed up by the scientist genius Balthazar. However, at the peak of his career, he simply vanished. We've continued his work and have come this far. Our work is almost complete. Well, it's about time I headed back. 
the experiment's about to begin. Yeah, but the thing is, Beltasar, I think that was the eye that um, was flying into the future. I think he was the guy that was flying into the future, at the very least. I don't remember the name of the other two, but another one ended up in uh, Kronos' original timeline, which was uh, in 12-something, I think, or 18-something. I don't really remember the exact year. And I know that one of them, I don't really remember his name either, he was flying into the uh, end of time. You know where time stands still. And uh, anyway, we're gonna fight this guy, these guys to test out uh, Valak's new powers on his weapons. Since his hit increased by 2% and his attack went up by 40. I mean 20. I'm making out to be better than it is. Okay, 160. A good thing about the stone weapon in general is that it seems to be able to crit quite often. Which is a really good thing, you know. Critical damage is it, quite a lot after all. So, uh, critting, definitely the way to go. Uh, let's see, can I end? Okay, I can enter this room then. Let's do that. See what happens. Also, I'm, not, I'm quite unsure why they don't believe in Zale. Because the thing is, we encountered uh, a certain some boss, you know, Vita Duo. Which is um, an exact copy of a boss from Chrono Trigger, which I don't really remember the name of. Actually, I think it was called Zale. Or Zale. Vita Duo and Zale is probably the same then. Then again, it was quite a while since I last played uh, Chrono Trigger. Fate is a large-scale prototype, completed in the year 2300. It integrated the old mother brain computer circuitry into a more powerful supercomputer. Oh, it's the crazy mother computer that went berserk. The record of fate is exposed. Whoops. Two worlds that are so close and yet so far in nature exist in different dimensions. Under surveillance of the main computer of Chronopolis. Fate. In other words, fate has always been observing the two parallel worlds and guiding them. Fate has been ma manipulating the world of El Nido in order to avoid any major change to the history it knows. If an event on El Nido influenced the main continent, the year 2400, in which fate exists, would change. This paradox could potentially lead to a great disaster. The records of fate... Oh, never mind, let me redo that. The record of fate, fate's terminal, collected data from around the world and input guidance directly into the minds of its users. In this discreet way, Fate is able to control the lives of people without them knowing. Guided by fate, the people of El Nido lead a harmonious life. In a sense, they are nothing more than puppets of fate. An instruction to the young girl in Arnie 01 to give up going the main continent as a poet. An instruction to the man in Arnie 02 to give up becoming a fisherman. A plan to avoid any point of contact with the main continent so as not to affect history. However, ever since the formation of the Dead Sea 10 years ago, fate has been unable to intervene directly with World 1. The best fate could do was cross the dimension and receive data through the record of fates. And with much difficulty, fate succeeded in binding Miguel to the Dead Sea as a watchman. Oh, that's pretty cool actually. This is the observation room. This is where we observe the two parallel worlds. Oh, that's pretty neat. Will you talk to me here, buddy? The main computer of Chronopolis is called Fate. Okay, so the computer is completely evil, I assume. This Fate contains a massive amount of historical data, dating up to the year 2400. Okay, that's nice. Uh, 
I do have a few things to cut out, but there's a big enemy here, so I'll end off the episode here. This has been Alpagrotus, thank you very much for watching, stay frog everyone, and I hope to see you next time. See you then.